you are looking at the Darren Nenner Neo 2000, I'm going to walk you through everything you're going to get and show you some of the things you should expect via voltage, how the UPS system works, and even tell you some of the specs. And I think the specs are a great place to start. This dude's 56 pounds, 2073 watt hours. It's going to have a maximum output, supposedly of continuous, of 2000 watts. We will test that. Basically, you can have this guy plugged in and charging. It's got a smart enough internal system to figure out what's going on. It's going to either push that energy back out through these plugs or it's going to charge the unit. It's going to be able to vary that pending the situation. If the draw is too much on the way out, it'll just stop charging the unit and keep pushing that electricity on the way out. You have three AC outputs. They are 20 amp plugs. Will it be a 20 amp unit? I don't know, but we see that a lot where they have 20 amp plugs up on the top. And then we have to wonder, will it supply the power quick enough to turn something like that on? We'll again test that. There's a light on the back. You do have wireless charging on top. That turns on with the DC functions down there. This is actually pretty cool, but let me bring you in and let's start doing some of our testing. Through this testing, we'll keep our Fluke multimeter hooked up. We're at 122 volts. We are currently running in the UPS mode. It is at 100% charge. Now, if you read the manual on this, we talked about the 20 amp plugs that are up here. This is only rated as a 15 amp model. The one thing that I like and dislike, I like that we have plug covers. I dislike that they're rubber. When I start to pull these down hard, I feel like I'm gonna break them off. Then I will no longer have plug covers. So with that said, it still works, but we have 20 amp receptacles, 15 amps is the max output. Now, when we look at the solar inputs, we're gonna unplug this. We have our standard AC, and then we have an XT60 here. This XT60 is rated for 33 to 60 volts with a 20 amp maximum input. So if you hook up your solar, make sure you're within that. Inside this is lithium iron phosphate batteries. That is good. These are gonna take up to 3,500 charges and it is recommended that you charge this unit monthly if you have it. We also have a DC output over here, multiple ones. These are gonna be all 12 volt, 10 amps, and we have a cigarette lighter. Now this cigarette adapter, car adapter, whatever you'd like to call it, is not a charging input. That's because the MPPT on the inside is obviously not gonna handle 12 volts. It needs more than that. You cannot charge this in your car one downside of this. Multiple uh, Quick Connect 3 amp USB-A outputs, two PD100 USB-Cs, pretty nice. The back has a light. If we wanna turn this on, we just push and hold. That'll also turn on the wireless charging on the top. To turn it off, we just push quickly. You can see we have everything going on here. It's telling it's kind of in a sleep mode, not much is happening. Let's turn on a charger and let some watts start to go out. It's going to start to show you what's happening here. And I like the digital display. It's a little bit hard to read underneath everything, but it does work. Let's turn on our push and hold, turn on our DC. So we have all that running. Still at 121 volts, which is great. If we just pull this plug, we're going to drop to 113. That's one thing about a lot of these portable power stations, you're gonna run at 110 volts rather than 120 like normal grid power. Is that a problem? No, but it does mess a little bit with some of the different sensitive circuitries if we push this. And that is something that I'd like to show you a little bit. Now here we have a circular saw plugged in. We're gonna test that a little bit later to see how well it puts out 15 amps. Right now, we just have this heat gun. This heat gun is going to take us up quite a ways. We'll just start this off on medium. Should be about 800 watts. It's not giving us the full because we have 200 watts of a battery charger. Sometimes that happens with this heat gun. You can see we're down to 109 volts. We kick this up. This should be 1400 watts total. Still not giving it to us complete. And this is fairly normal because we have 200 watts going out on the battery charger and this should be 14. We should be at closer to 1600. We look at our volts and we're down to 108. Not horrible, but if you start to 
add something else into this, you're just gonna continue downwards in volts, and that's not really a great thing. So currently we have the DC off and we're at 111.7 volts. Let's just plug this in to its UPS state. So it's gonna charge, we go up to 122 volts, which is like, that's what I'd like to see. We're at 117 because we were obviously charging. Let's take a listen to this circular saw starting up. That's awesome. Starts up, rock and roll, ready to go. Now. We'll unplug. That's gonna drop us to 111 volts. If this is 15 amps and gonna give it to us quickly, we're gonna hope that this thing starts up the same. Not the case at all. We got this down to 64 volts. That's not good at all. You can check the Hertz quick, we're at 60.43. So when I just click this, boom, 84. We drop significantly. That went to 61 and it kind of turned itself off. It said, wow, you're just dying. So this unit should really probably turn itself off and say, I can't supply that power to keep this going. Because if you had a computer or something else sensitive hooked up to this while you tried to use this skill saw, it would probably damage it. In the background, we have a vacuum going that is 1100 watts. We are going to unplug our circular saw and plug back in our heater, the heat gun. We're going to start to just test what we can do. 1800 watts, we're at 110, which is good. That vacuum shouldn't take up a lot. We're just going to go to high here. 2300, still holding 110, that's great. This is a 3000 max. So at some point here, this should click off and say, yeah, not happening guys. But it is holding 110 volts and oddly enough, it's holding this 2300, which is good. It's still not giving us the full output that we would normally have at the heat gun. And that kind of scares me a little bit if you were to plug something else in and start to really push this. In fact, we're gonna have to, just to make sure that this will actually click itself off. So I wanna come over here and try the circular saw with everything else running. Let's just pull the trigger. See our wattage goes right down, which is interesting. But at the same point, we're almost killing the vacuum. The heat gun's still working. Nothing's turning off. We are way overloading this machine. I'm gonna hold this and see what happens. That's really odd. Because the vacuum turned off, heat gun's probably running, and this still went. I imagine our voltage is absolutely crap. It's telling us our watt outs is nothing. It should be turning off for safety features. Vacuum is still running. That's not good. So you can probably hear the cooling fans running in this. We had this guy really kicking, uh, trying to put way too much power out and it just kept running and never clicked off. That's probably in the circuitry somewhere and probably can be corrected very easily. Odd that it would allow itself to drain down that voltage. And that's what scares me if someone were to use this in their home, connect it up to a bunch of things, say I got my computer running, my Wi-Fi running, oh, and I wanna hook up whatever else, microwave, anything. You turn that on, this doesn't turn off. You really drop that voltage down and your microwave goes poof or something else doesn't, you know, isn't happy. That's the dangers of some of these. I'd rather see it turn off like a breaker says, hey, I'm overloaded, right? Click, turns off the power, saves everything, saves fires, saves a lot of things. And I'm not saying thermally this is an issue, but 
that is definitely not something that you constantly want to have a huge draw going on. So when you're looking at these, you know, take a look. I love going over these because there's a lot of different ones on the market. There's a million of them on Amazon. There's a lot of them that say they're the best out there, but we find a lot that don't have that safety system in them. And that's something that everyone should have, unless you're really on top of what you plug this plug into this, because most of the time you're going to be just using it because you need it. And then next thing you know, you blow up something that you really like. Not cool. Here it is. Leave me your comments below. If you're looking at it, hopefully we explained everything that you need to know about it. And if you're still interested in it, leave some comments asking some questions. We have a lot of different ones out there. It's worth looking at multiple ones. Come back, find a video, make sure it does what you want it to do. As always, we appreciate your time. Give us a like in this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Have a great day.